everybody. Welcome to the Hidden Gems podcast. We are really excited today to bring you some more deeper finds in one of the streaming services. Today we're talking about Amazon Prime. This is only our second time talking about Amazon Prime and uh, I'm real excited to, to be here. And, and uh, Ryan is here. Hey Rachel, so good to be back with you once again. And I am, uh, I'm so excited to be talking about Amazon Prime today because I, th I think I may be bragging slightly but i think these five may be my maybe my most favorite choices that i've ever made like i've made a few ones that are like okay that one's good but yeah. these five i looked back at just the <laughs> awe and the wonder of all five of my choices and i was like yeah. I have done good on this day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I really like all five of my picks as well. And I, I, I remember last time when we did Amazon Prime, I think both of us kind of, both of us said, wow, this was way better than we expected. And I don't know why that's the case, but I think there's sort of a, that, that we think of Amazon Prime when it comes to, you know, their series, Marvelous Miss Maisel, uh, you know, s stuff like that. Uh, but the Jack Ryan series, uh, things like that, but we don't think of them as the movie place as much. And yet here we are with, I think some pretty good, uh, a good list. Yeah. And I was looking through, uh, through your list as well. And I'm like, wow, Rachel normally has pretty good taste, but this time around yeah. she has, she's pulling out bangers. <laughs> Well, good. <laughs> I was like, well, where is this going? Uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, there was a lot to pick from and, and stuff that I'm pretty excited about. So, uh, and some of them you can make our argument about whether it's a hidden gem or not. We use that term fairly loosely. We don't do it. Uh, but, uh, but just not the, we want people to look beyond the, the big titles that people are talking about and, and, uh, and maybe go a little deeper. So, uh, and sometimes we just want to talk about it. So there we go. It's our show. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can do whatever uh, we, we want. <laughs> we encourage people to go past the front page. That's right. <laughs> well, why don't you start us off? What is your first pick? All righty then. So my first pick is from the glorious year 1990, and it is called Days of Thunder. Uh, this was directed by Tony Scott, who also directed Top Gun and just a lot of other movies from like the mid to late eighties all the way through to the 2010s. He had a pretty long and lengthy career. Uh, it was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson, uh, who direct, who produced Top Gun, like I mentioned, Armageddon and a lot of others. And it stars Tom Cruise. We all know who he is. Uh, and it tells the story of a formula one driver named Cole Trickle played by Cruise who is recruited by a wealthy car, car uh, dealership owner played by uh, played by the uh, played by the the old man from Independence Day who says hello boys I'm back uh, Randy Randy Quaid thank oh, yeah. you thank you brain Randy Quaid <laughs> uh, and they also recruit a very seasoned crew chief played by Robert Duvall who is not exactly a big fan of Trickle so the movie is all about Trickle trying to do his thing, but Duvall trying to rein him in and just the dynamic between them. And this movie has a pretty star-studded cast. Like I mentioned, Tom Cruise is in it. Robert Duvall, he's good in everything that he's involved with. Uh, let's see, Nicole Kidman, of course, she's in there as well. Uh, a very young or, well, younger looking uh, Michael Rooker is in there as Rowdy Burns, who, and, and I think Michael Rooker has perpetually looked 45 throughout his entire life. I cannot confirm nor deny that, but I'm serious. He's got like the Benjamin Button thing going on there because the man does not age. But in, in the case of Days of Thunder, this movie is very important to me because it gave me my love of NASCAR that still exists to this very day. And not just that, but I think it's a, I think it's a fairly decent movie. It's very cheesy, but of course it is. It's from Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson in the late '80s and the early '90s, so that was very par for the course for them. Uh, and I won't say I won't go so far as to say that Top Gun is is lesser than of the Days of Thunder, but 
it's a movie that I like to pop on every once in a while and just bask in like the '90s cheese of it all. And it and it also has a pretty funny line, pretty funny exchange between Duvall and Cruz, where Duvall's like, "All right, now I, when you get back out on the track, I want you to hit the pace car." And Cruz is like, "Why?" And Duvall's like, "Well, you've hit everything else on the track. I want you to be perfect." So yeah, <laughs> this is a this is pretty solid. I actually have never seen this movie, believe it or not, but I did, I feel like I've seen it because uh, there, it, the, there was an amusement park, I don't even know if it's still there, but in Virginia, where I grew up, uh, in, in the, I grew up in Maryland, so it was pretty close, called King's Dominion, and they had a whole ride uh, based on Days of Thunder. <laughs> Really? So you got to, I, yeah, you got to feel like you were in the, in the, in, in the, uh, you were driving. It was like a simulator, motion simulator kind of ride. And, uh, yeah, so I just remember for that and then had, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, it had one of the famous NASCAR drivers, uh, that, um, it was, was it Dale Earnhardt? He had I want to say, I want to say it's Richard Petty. Oh yeah, yeah, that's who it is. Yeah, yep. And uh, anyway, it was pretty fun. <laughs> so I remember the movie more for that than I do for the movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, I should I should watch it. Why not? It sounds pretty fun. Yeah, just... if you love if you love Top Gun, you're gonna adore Days of Thunder because it's from the exact same creative team, mm -hmm. pretty much. Even it even has the color palette down too. It's kind of scary. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. And I, I mean, I just really enjoyed uh, Ford v Ferrari last year, so might as well uh, watch some racing movies. So when we do a when we do a follow ups, maybe that's one I'll have to make sure I do. Is, is watch it. So please yeah. do. <laughs> Good choice. All right. Well, my next choice is uh, we are going to talk about a Woody Allen film that was pretty well regarded when it came out, but I don't feel like I hear it talk about much, maybe because of the Woody Allen connection. It's Midnight in Paris. And uh, this is a movie that I love about this writer played by Owen Wilson that is there with, in Paris with his girlfriend and her parents and uh, they meet up with these sort of erudite professor types uh, with uh, um, with Michael she Michael Sheen and uh, and uh, they he's just he's got writer's block he's trying to figure out what to write and he's somebody who really idolizes the writers from the 19 like 1920s 1930s and uh so he, one day he stumbles through it like a time loop and he ends up in the 1920s and he's hanging out with hemingway and <laughs> uh and gertrude sign and all of these people that he idolizes and he meets marion cotillard over there and uh he meets Picasso and, and there's so many little cameos of people that I didn't even know. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And I just love that whole idea of sort of, we, we place certain time periods on a pedestal. And when he gets back to those time periods, they've placed a, a different time period on a pedestal. And they were always kind of looking back and wishing and not appreciating the moment that we're in is sort of the message of the, of the movie and uh, I love so I love it have you have you seen this it's a movie that I always meant to watch but mm -hmm. I have never gotten around to it just for various yeah. reasons but it's a movie that I was like I really need to see Midnight in Paris mm -hmm. and, and it just it was like I just never got there and uh, and I think I I think I want to see it more now because just a bit of a side road uh, for my series on my channel, the AFI project, hashtag cheap plug. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched uh, Woody Allen's first movie, Annie Hall. And mm. uh, I wasn't a humongous fan and mm. I did all the research. It was essentially Woody Allen kind of riffing on himself a little bit. And if mm -hmm. that is the case, then Woody Allen is certainly not a guy I would love to meet in real life because he just seems like the worst. So mm -hmm. I, 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 and so I have a desire to see maybe his other projects to say, maybe it's a little bit different than that because 
Annie Hall kind of turned me off a little bit. I can understand that. I I do appreciate Annie Hall. It's not my favorite. I would if I was going old school, uh, Woody Allen. I actually prefer Manhattan over Annie Hall. But uh, I I appreciate it for the moment that it was in. But yeah, it's he is he is a lot. He's pretty insufferable in it. Um, but uh, but you have such an amazing cast in here playing these famous people that it's kind of like spot the you sort of spot the celebrity kind of a thing. Uh, Tom Hiddleston playing F. Scott Fitzgerald, Corey Stoll, who I love playing Hemingway. He has so much fun in the role. Uh, you have uh, Kathy Bates as Gertrude Stein. Uh, the the list goes on. Adrian Brody, Salvador Dali. Um, so that's fun just on its on its own. But like I said, there's sort of a thought experiment of of uh, how often do we sort of idolize the past and uh, and don't appreciate the moment that we're in. And the and those people were probably idolizing a different past. And uh, so yeah it's not as cynical as his early work uh it's not as um uh sarcastic it's a little bit this is a little bit more sweet <laughs> yeah ju judging from judging from what you've been saying it does yeah. sound like it plus tom hiddleston as f scott fitzgerald i gotta watch the movie just for that <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta see loki playing f scott fitzgerald uh i just i really do love it i think it is a, a really uh fun uh fun movie with something to say you get cole porter zelda fitzgerald uh josephine baker uh just everybody from that era <laughs> is uh is in the movie and uh so anyway yeah i highly i highly recommend it uh it's um even if you don't think you typically like woody allen i think this is one of his more palatable and approachable films and owen wilson and marion cotillard and uh, rachel mcadams are all are all in there so anyway yeah when when we do the uh when we do the follow-ups, you'll have to check it out. Yeah, that'll definitely be at the top of the list. Uh, so what do you have next? So my next choice is from 1986, and it's a basketball movie, but it may be my favorite basketball movie of all time. And it is, yeah. and it is a movie called Hoosiers. Uh, this, is, this is the story about a very successful high school basketball, wait, actually, let me back that up. That's a college basketball mm -hmm. coach named Norman Dale, played brilliantly by Gene Hackman, who, through an accident that I will not spoil, you just have to go watch the movie to find it out, is basically barred from college basketball for life. And after an extended stint in the U.S. Navy, accepts a job coaching a very, very small town high school team in Hickory, Indiana. It's like one of those drive through towns that, unless you were truly looking for it, you would just breeze right on through. Uh, Dale has a very uh, is, has a very in-your-face coaching style, and he doesn't take any BS from any of the townspeople, and uh, it immediately rubs everyone the wrong way. But at the end of the day, he eventually wins everyone over and leads them leads them to the finals. Uh, I saw this movie at the right age. Uh, this is one of my father's favorites, and he was like, "We're sitting you down, and we are watching." Uh, and we are watching this movie together. And so I'm like, uh, okay, sure. And, and sure enough, it just turned out to be just a, a fantastic movie. Uh, Gene Hackman is brilliant as he usually was. Uh, Barbara Hershey's really good in there. She was, uh, she was, she was, uh, she was in movies like The Right Stuff and she was awesome mm -hmm. in that and a very long and lengthy career. Dennis Hopper is in there. He's really good. And fun fact, one of the characters named Cletus, who hires Normandale, is a gentleman by the name of Sheb Woolley, who sang the song, he was a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. No, I'm not kidding. That is, that's an actual thing. Oh, and, really? I was shocked, <laughs> and I was shocked to find that out, that that was the same dude. But it's, it's true. But, uh, but Hoosiers is not just a basketball movie. It's got a lot of heart. It's funny at times. Uh, it's dramatic a lot, but it's all handled very well. 
And there's also some basketball in there too. And it's all incredibly well filmed. And it's just, it's such a good movie. It's the greatest basketball movie that I feel like nobody talks about. So Hoosiers is definitely, it's definitely something you should check out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this just goes to show, it depends on kind of who you, who you hang out with, who you talk to, because I actually lived in Indiana for uh, two years on my, for near two years on my mission for my church. And oh, really? this movie is still beloved, of course, there in Indiana, especially in Southern Indiana, near uh, Indiana University and the Hoosiers. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Hoosier basketball is beloved and just basketball in general and one of the things the movie totally gets right is sort of the group experience of the of small town indiana and it was different than where because i grew up in near dc about an hour uh, uh west of dc and the, dc's got a lot of things going for it but it's not really a sports town maryland uh, virginia it's not really they're they've got so much else <laughs> <laughs> they're not really that sports you know kind of thing and so it was it was quite the uh the transformation i guess for me to go to indiana and just see because like for instance if i didn't have a family member in playing high school sports i would never like follow and go to the high school games that to me would be very weird but not in Indiana, <laughs> not in Indiana, like everybody went and everyone knew about it and everyone, and the way that everybody's kind of aware of the new coach and everyone's talking about it. And like, that was very well done and very authentic to the Hoosier state. <laughs> and I think that it's somewhat similar to like football in uh, in Texas, although they're really into football in Indiana as well. You got your Notre Dame, you got your, uh, they just love group activities and things like that more than other places that I've lived. And where they throw, where they throw a ball into a hoop or a net or yeah. to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, so uh, people got really into the high school sports and the college sports and and uh, all of that stuff there. And so they capture that so well. And Dennis Hopper is so good as this alcoholic uh, father who is, I mean, if you've ever had anyone in your family who has, uh, has been an alcoholic, suffered with that, he captures that so well. It's, um, it's almost scary how well he captures it. And, and uh, the kind of the demons with the Gene Hackman character also love the score of Hoosiers. I, the, uh, I, I think it's Elmer Bernstein, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they actually, uh, they actually got, uh, they actually got the sound of the basketball and they interwove it into the score. You can hear that slap, 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 slap kind of sound uh, into the score. And uh, Jerry Goldsmith, sorry, it's Jerry Goldsmith is the, the composer. But I think he yeah. did a great job with the score. It's really memorable. Yeah, you beat me to it. I was just going to say it's Jerry Goldsmith. And yeah. like they they definitely they definitely got a good man to uh, to to voice that. And yeah. uh, and to build on that point. Yeah, the sound of the sound the score is incredible like when i'm just i i have a lot of back roads near where i live so mm -hmm. when i'm driving on my back road i'm just humming to myself do 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 don then do 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 yes. <laughs> yes and the 80s was such a good time for sports movies I mean, you things like rocky a chariots of fire this uh, it's it was just a, a really good time for wholesome yeah. sports movies yeah, Chariots of Fire won Best Picture mm -hmm. in 1981. So did Rocky. That was in 1977 mm -hmm. or something. I guess, yeah, so not 80s. But that time period was was really good for, I feel like, those kinds of movies. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, uh, one, one more note before we move on. The person that Jerry Anspa, the director of the movie, wanted to play Norman Dale was actually Burt Reynolds. And Reynolds turned it down because he feel like if I'm starring in a basketball movie, then my career is over. And boy, no. how wrong he was. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Dennis Hopper ended up getting uh, nominated for Oscar for that role. For in if I were running things, he would have won, and that's why I don't care about the Oscars. But that's, <laughs> that's another right. rant for another time. Uh, that's what's right. What's next for you, Rachel? <laughs> All right. So my next pick is not an Oscar nominee, uh, but it's one I love. It's from the world of Hallmark. It's called The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And I this, am shocked. <laughs> this movie, I, I kind of picked this as sort of the uh, the the representative of like a whole bunch of Hallmark movies that are on Amazon Prime. There were Hallmark-like movies. They're on Amazon Prime. There were a ton. And of course, they know me well because they're like, you might like this and you might like that. I'm like, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, and this one is one of my favorites. This is a fan favorite, one of the most popular they've ever done way back in 2008 uh, that when Hallmark Channel was just starting was barely doing Christmas movies. They did like four or five a year. And <laughs> this one- Now they're doing 150. Now they're doing, that's right. And uh, this stars Henry, Win Henry Winkler, the Fonz. And he is delightful. He plays the uncle of this woman, Brooke Burns, who is the single mom. She's dating this man of business who's a loser. Uh, but she's dating him <laughs> and he ends up meeting, he's a former cop. He ends up meeting this guy uh, on the plane and who's the chef, who's kind of this bohemian guy. He's played by Warren Christie. They get to the, uh, the they get to Denver, I think it is. And all the, the flights are all messed up. And so he convinces Brooke Burns to allow Warren Christie to stay at the house. And he's convinced that this is a much better guy for her than her business guy. And <laughs> so he starts all these sort of shenanigans to try to keep this guy there longer. Uh, and uh, it's just fun, charming, enjoyable. <laughs> What more could you uh, want? You've got Henry, Henry Winkler, Brooke Burns. You've got a delightful Christmas movie. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, we could just leave it off there because uh, <laughs> you filled in the blanks right there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, so what, uh, what do you have next? So my next pick is, uh, is one that's actually pretty recent. Uh, it came out, like, maybe a couple weeks ago and it's and and I try to to do more like like have some distance because mm -hmm. I don't watch a ton of modern stuff but for this one I had to make an exception this is a this is a Jim Gaffigan the pale tourist uh this is broken up into I, I don't know what to call them like episodes but it's essentially two Two comedy specials that are both like 50 minutes long and it equates to about two hours. So you get like two and one. Uh, Jim Gaffigan is among my favorite comedians going today. Uh, I've watched every one of his specials. I know his Hot Pockets bit by heart. Hot Pocket. Um, I, and I just, I've loved, I've loved his like evolution that he has been going through. And he has partnered up with Amazon and like, Bill Burr and Dave Chappelle have done with Netflix and and Gaffigan has been uh, he did one last year and it called Quality Time which was hysterical and and Pale Tourist is just as good like I said it's broken up into two segments one that was filmed in Toronto Canada and one that was filmed in Madrid Spain and I like the Spanish version just a little bit more than the Canadian version but they're both great. Uh, some highlights of the Spanish version include a bit where where Jim talks about paella and how it's cooked in a pan the size of a manhole cover, and how the Spanish invented invented the siesta. And they invented an excuse to take a nap between lunch and dinner, which he is a very big fan of, and that's that's really funny. And then some. And then one of my favorite parts of the Canadian part was how he talked about how he visited the the province of Saskatchewan and how everything in Saskatchewan sounds perverted. Like even the name Saskatchewan sounds like an STD. <laughs> but, uh, but, 
But why why I love Gaffigan so much is that he has such a dry delivery, and he even has a voice where he like pretend heckles himself. Like it it makes much more sense when you actually watch it. But but he is he is just a really really funny man, and he has just gotten better. He's just gotten better with time. So definitely check one out and definitely if you watch either the canadian one or the spanish one if you like either one or you like both uh, let me know yeah i have never uh, seen any of his comedy specials but i've uh, i've seen him in a few movies and uh on a few other things and so i'll i'll definitely have to check it out i love a good comedy uh special especially if it's not too raunchy it doesn't sound like that's too bad yeah and uh and and Gaffigan, uh, I've Gaffigan's been in a few movies that I've seen. Uh, he mm-hmm. was in this movie called Chappaquiddick about the whole Ted Kennedy and the uh, leaving the girl at the bottom of the river scenario. And he was alongside guys like Jason Clark and Ed Helms and just a pretty stacked cast. And he was actually in an Amazon original called Troop Zero that yeah. I've been needing to watch, but I have not seen yet, though I've heard oh. I've heard good things. Yeah, I saw it at Sundance. Uh, it was uh, 2019, I think, 2019. I saw it at Sundance. So it's cute. It's real cute. It's got Vila Viol- Davis, Alison Janney, great cast. Definitely worth a watch, I would say. Uh, so cool. Good, good, good recommendation. All right. Well, my next choice is, uh, I actually have two from last year, uh, that are my next, uh, that are, uh, that I'm going to suggest today, but I have rocket man from last year and I don't know if this is hidden or not, but I don't think it got really the, certainly to get the Oscar love. I think it deserves it. It, I guess it got best song. So yay for Elton John but uh but this is about elton john's life and i just really admired it because i felt like it really tried to do something different it tried to actually make it a musical and you actually had the characters in the songs uh that as is this if it was a musical and i thought the the production design and the it was just to me it felt fresh and it's so hard to do that with a biopic you know because it's just like the beats are so familiar and and you know obviously it has those familiar beats but i felt like they 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 tried to say okay how can we make this visually different how can we make this interesting and i thought the taron edgerton was really good he does his own singing and he's really good at it and i mean i just felt like this was a billion times better than judy last year and judy got all the praise when i think this was way more interesting and just way better so uh that's my opinion and uh yeah i mean it has all of your favorite for the most part all of your favorite elton john songs they don't do it chronologically uh they do it for whatever fits that moment because they're doing this musical style um, I think that Richard Madden is super hunky, <laughs> even though he's a villain. Uh, he's also he's also a, a he's also a bastard in that movie. But I'll talk about that in one second. I yeah. don't mean to cut you yeah. off. No, he is a villain, but he is very handsome in it. <laughs> um, I didn't love Bryce Dallas Howard in it. I didn't love her accent. I didn't think it was very good. But small, small concerns for how overall. I was entertained and enjoyed it. Yeah, I have a very interesting relationship with this movie because I saw it like the Thursday that it came out with my mom and our neighbor. And when I walked out of there, I'm like, okay, that w- that, that, that was fine. Because mm-hmm. I, I had watched this video on like the formula of music biopics and it kind of ruined them for me. And so now I'm like, all right, there's where the drugs come in, you know, there's where the fall happens, you know, that's when they pick things up and then it ends on a freeze frame. So I was a little, I I guess I was a little cynical towards the movie, but then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, okay, I liked what they did there. And it just, the more I thought about it, the more that I I did enjoy it. Uh, Like you said, Rachel, Taron Edgerton is just, 
he just disappears into this role and he does his own singing yay for that mm -hmm. uh one of the, one of the elements of the movie that you forgot to mention was jamie bell as bernie Taupin. Mm -hmm. uh maybe it's because i'm a big jamie bell fan because i'm a fan of turn washington spies and 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 he's the star of that but he was just fantastic in the mm -hmm. movie and he doesn't get talked about nearly as much as i think that he should plus he was in that awful fan fant four stick movie and remember that list of people i want to give a hug to for being in <laughs> terrible movies he's near the top of it <laughs> <laughs> oh, i mean that but, cast was great for that movie it was just it was not that it was not their fault Right. And, uh, and like you said, I wasn't crazy about Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, she looked very different from what I had normally seen her in, but just as far as the role itself, it was like, okay, she's there and she did her job just fine. But yeah, like you said, what sold me overall on the movie was the musical numbers and how they treated Elton John's music with the respect that it deserves because Elton John has never made and will never make normal music. Like he mm -hmm. makes OTT, you know, just wild, fantastical music. And that's what I love about him. And they treated it like the wild OT, OTT and fantastical mm -hmm. musical numbers that they absolutely deserve to be treated. So I give yeah. Dexter Fletcher nothing but praise for that. I just liked the way, yes, it follows those beats of the, and I know the video you're talking about, but I thought that it, it added something new by the fact that it kind of treated it like a music video uh, that, you know, that the, the songs actually came alive in the movie itself in, uh, in an artistic, interesting way. And so that to me was them trying to say, okay, we know the formula. How do we, how do we bring something new to it? How do we do something different? And, uh, and so that, that's why I, I, I admired it, even though, cause I don't think formulas are bad. I think it's just, if you lean, obviously I don't think formulas are bad because I watch 115 Christmas movies a year, but <laughs> if you, it's what you do with that formula that I think is, makes it problematic or, or not, but anyway so um so yeah so what do you have next so uh it, one more note before we move on that i don't have a problem with formulas either it just i guess in the case of rocket man on the first viewing i was mm -hmm. i i just it kind of that video kind of spoiled it for me so i'm like okay here's where this part comes in and yeah. oh it's coming in right about now so yeah at, at first i was just i guess i was jaded a little but as uh, but time has been kind to the movie for me. Yeah, so that's, that's the, that's the note we'll leave off on. Uh, my next, my next choice is from 2018 and it is a movie called A Simple Favor. Uh, this was directed by Paul Feig who directed The Heat, Spy, and a certain movie involving women busting ghosts that I will refuse to mention because I like this comment section and I do not want you to get any hate mail, Rachel. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> but uh, but the movie is about a uh, is about these two women. Uh, one of them is played by Anna Kendrick. She's a vlogger, and she befriends this other woman played by Blake Lively. She uh, Lively is a very mysterious woman. Like she has all the fame. She has a beautiful husband played by Henry Golding, who I'm slowly becoming a big fan of. And it seems like her life is perfect, but then Lively up and disappears. And so the movie revolves around uh, Kendrick trying to find her and just going down the rabbit hole of the Blake Lively character. Uh, this was a movie that when I saw the trailer of, I'm like, I'm going to have to see it to review it, but man, I'm not going to enjoy myself. But I was pleasantly surprised to find that this movie is surprisingly really great uh it's it kind of reminds me a lot of of alfred hitchcock's work in that just when you think you know the answers the movie changes the questions on you and it just twist after twist and 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 it all makes sense in the context of the world that was being built up as i'm a big fan of anna kendrick i think she is very talented i've loved her ever since i saw her in end of watch which is a very underrated cop movie uh, 
Blake Lively stars in my second favorite shark movie of all time called The Shallows. I'm sure you can predict my first one. It's Jaws. <laughs> uh, and, and Henry Golding is great in there as well. And it's just got a really, really good cast. And I think Paul Feig gets crapped on a lot because of that whole women busting ghosts movie. But I, I think people f have forgotten that he can be a good director if he wants to. He directed some of my favorite episodes of The Office. Uh, he directed Spy, like I mentioned, and The Heat, also like I mentioned. And, uh, and so and yeah. he definitely put all his love into A Simple Favor, and it was greatly appreciated. It's so good. I love it. It's, uh, it keeps you guessing. It's uh, it, it kind of, if people liked Knives Out, I think that they probably would like A Simple Favor. Uh, are, a, are you all ready for a hot take? Yeah. <laughs> I like A Simple Favor more than Knives Out. Yeah. I remember you saying you weren't that big a fan of Knives Out. But like, if you like a kind of a, a fun mystery story with reveals and uh and clues and all of that then i think you'll enjoy it 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 definitely tries to surprise you and uh with your with our different characters and with reveals and uh yeah i but everybody is is uh having fun with it and i really enjoyed it too i really love the style of it it's got great costumes uh the all the clothes are really well done uh so yeah good choice um Okay, we're taking a left turn, as you like to say. We are <laughs> talking uh, about another movie from last year uh, that I really enjoyed called Crawl. And oh. I'm, I'm not the biggest horror person, but I do love a good Creature Scares movie. And <laughs> I, I, I also really love Jaws, and I, I, uh, I love The Shallows, and I love... Uh, even something like 47 meters down the first one not the second one i i really enjoyed uh so i love i love a good creature scares movie and even a cheesy one i i really enjoy and so crawl you have the same thing but with gators and uh the uh, uh the she's in this house uh during this big storm and she is going to try to save her dad who is caught in the basement, but there are gators that have gotten into the house. And it definitely, you have to suspend disbelief and just enjoy the movie because lots of parts of it are ridiculous, but I just enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times since and I enjoyed it every time I've watched it. And I, K.S. Godelario uh, is the lead and I thought she did a great job and barry pepper plays her dad and he did a great job and it's basically just the two of them the whole movie with the gators and uh yeah it's really fun <laughs> yeah speaking of guys i want to give a hug to for being in bad movies uh, barry pepper was in battlefield earth one oh. of the most infamously awful movies ever yeah but uh, <laughs> but i i digress no crawl is an excellent movie i was like I was going into it like, okay, this should be interesting. And I was blown away by how good this movie was. It kind of reminded me a lot of like the original Evil Dead, except if you take out the demons and replace them with very, very hungry crocodiles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, it's just, you're stuck in this house with yeah. these two people and you can't get out. So you're, you're just in there like, God, please get out of there. Come on. And and just the smallest victories that our main leads accomplish, you're like, yes! And you're just like, you want to jump out of joy, you, you want to jump for joy, but yeah. then it's immediately thrown back into chaos. Like, just when you think they got the boat, the boat crashes. Just when they get on yeah. top of the door, the crocodiles eat the door. And it's just like, it's just one on top of the other until it's just, and it's like, it. I hate to like be cliche, but it's like a white knuckle thriller for like ninety mm -hmm. plus minutes. And you definitely, like I said, you definitely have to suspend disbelief that you can outswim, uh, swim the crocodiles and oh, and sure, uh, you know sure. some other stuff like that is ridiculous. But it it it's just so much fun, and it doesn't overstay its welcome, and it doesn't take itself too seriously, and all of those reasons make it a really fun time. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely underrated, especially. Uh, especially for something that came out like a few years ago. Yeah. All right. Well, what's your last pick? 
So my last pick is from 1999, the fabulous year in movies that was 1999. And it is a movie called Galaxy Quest. Uh, the best way I can describe this movie is that it lovingly parodies Star Trek, the Star Trek like universe, uh, the Star Trek fan community, and Star Trek fan conventions near per to near perfection. Uh, it tells the story of of a world in which there is a sci-fi television show called Galaxy Quest. It was Star Trek, but it, it was literally not named Star Trek. It, the show lasted three seasons, like the original series did, and none of the original actors went on to anything worthy of note, and they're now just going to various conventions, and they absolutely hate it, and they hate each other. However, they are approached by an alien race who achieved, or achieved, they received something like a black box that contained episodes of their television show. And it became so influential to this alien race that they literally molded their entire culture after that TV show. And they see this cast as pretty much their gods. And when their race is threatened, they go to them and they're like, can you please help us stop them? And of course, our, the actors don't have the heart to tell them that they're TV actors, so they go on the journey with them. This is a movie that is super underrated and that no one talks about it, and I think absolutely everybody should. It's got a pretty big cast. Tim Allen is in there, and I enjoy everything that he is involved with. Uh, Sigourney Weaver's in there. She's great in everything she's into. Uh, Tony Shalhoub is in there. He's great. Uh, a very, very young-looking Rain Wilson, who would be Dwight from The Office, is one of the secondary aliens, and like, and he's so much fun in here, but easily the best part of this movie is Alan Rickman. Like if you just know Alan Rickman for being Hans Gruber in Die Hard or as Severus Snape in the Harry Potter movies, then do yourself a favor and watch him in Galaxy Quest because he is hysterical. He's this Shakespearean trained actor. He went on Galaxy Quest just to get his foot in the door and nothing came of it. So he just goes to these conventions out of pure spite and just remembers the glory days of when he was in Hamlet and he had five encores, count them, five. And it just, it's so hysterically funny. Uh, my one knock against it is that some of the CGI is a little kind of, hmm, but it was the late 90s and you know, you gotta give some benefit of the doubt. Outside of that though, Galaxy Quest is just, it's a lot of fun and it's just something that everybody should check out. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is a, a favorite. You don't feel like it's talked about hardly at all. Uh, I, I I love Galaxy Quest. I maybe it's, it's just because I uh, have a lot of friends who love Star Trek, and uh, I I did a whole series on all of the Star Trek movies with my friend and my friend Tom, and we also reviewed the galaxy quest movie and i love galaxy quest it would definitely be in my list of top 50 comedies of all time for sure uh agreed it's, it's so funny it's so sweet uh and i feel like it has a lot to say just on fandom in general so even if you aren't a star trek fan like there's plenty of, of funny jokes for people who are star trek fans but there's just people if you are a fan of anything uh, then I think it's also a sweet love letter to fans, but it's also a, it's just something that you'll be able to relate to and should be able to laugh at. And, uh, and yes, you're right about Alan Rickman. Hilarious. So good as the Shakespearean actor. And every time he has to say his line about the, by my glove for hammer, hammer you shall yeah. be avenged. <laughs> and he's so irritated. Uh, yeah, it's really, really good. I love that movie. Uh, well, my last pick is one that will depend on your tolerance for Kevin Spacey, whether you can watch <laughs> it or not. But I do think it's it's a good film. Uh, it's called it's called Elvis and Nixon. And it is one of that is it was 2016, and it kind of flew under the radar. But it has Michael Shannon playing Elvis, 
and Kevin Spacey playing Nixon. And it's all about the most requested photo from the National Archives is this of this meeting between Elvis Presley and Richard Nixon. And so it's all about the events that led up to this one moment. And I think it's really well done and interesting and good acting. I think particularly Michael Shannon is really good as Elvis. Uh, it has a great cast uh, with uh, Colin Hanks in it, Tracy Letts, Tate Donovan, uh, just a ton of really good people. And, uh, you know, it's just interesting to learn about that moment of history and so yeah if you can tolerate watching a movie with kevin spacey you don't have to pay for it so you're not supporting him it's part of amazon for <laughs> uh, then uh then give it a watch and uh, i think i think you'd enjoy it uh yeah i think it's rather ironic that kevin spacey who is personal friends with bill clinton is playing a republican president there's yeah. a lot to unpack <laughs> there that's well above my pay grade <laughs> But just, this is a movie that I heard about initially when it first came out. I'm like, wow, that sounds just like, it sounds like an oddity. Uh, yeah. just, just judging from who's starring in it and what the subject matter is, is like, you could never imagine it. But uh, it's definitely something I want to check out because I think Elvis is, I don't want to say he's underrated because he has a legion of fans like who are dedicated to him to this very day. He has his own radio channel on Sirius XM oh, yeah. for all you Sirius XM fans out there. So I don't want to say he's underrated, but I think that he has he had a really amazing voice that has not been replicated to this day. And I listen to his music quite frequently and and everyone just thinks of him as like the you know the oh you know and like the kung yeah. fu and just like the fat Elvis and all that. But back in the day, he was he was entertaining like he was rock and roll he was everything that he he was he was the draw and so every so i've tried to find out more stuff about him and so it's strange that i haven't seen this movie yet but now it is on my radar and i absolutely will yeah how do you feel about watching old kevin spacey now that he's had his fall from grace uh, is it hard for you or not yeah. really uh yeah. I, 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 I personally believe in the whole sacred monster theory. It's like separating the art from the artist. Like I can still watch a movie like Seven, you know, knowing that Kevin Spacey's the villain in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I love John Wayne, despite the fact that he said some pretty skeezy stuff in his later life. Mm -hmm. uh, I can get through a Roman Polanski or a Woody Allen movie just fine, knowing all the stuff that they did, all, mm -hmm. all the stuff that they did. So so I can tolerate it. I understand that some people can't, and that's totally fine. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's completely up to them. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, like, well, it's just a movie. Like, no, 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 no. Like, some in some cases, these people hurt other people, and there's yeah. no getting around that. I can get past it, but I also recognize that some people can't. Yeah. So I'll, I just try and be be relatively tolerant of that and just and, and just try and be understanding uh, just yeah. like perspective if you want to call it that me too me too well said uh i agree uh, there's uh, sometimes when it's easier than others uh and sometimes certain roles are easier than others uh but lots of people going to make it a movie you have to always keep that in mind not just one person so yeah check out elvis and nixon if you want to learn something about history and uh, some pretty good performances uh so there we go that's it we did it <laughs> amazon prime showing up lots of good stuff to watch nobody has any excuse to be bored like i always say <laughs> yeah look at amazon prime being the sleeper hit of this podcast <laughs> that's right that's right so let us know what you think if you've seen any of these we'd love your feedback and if you have any suggestions for streaming services you want us to check out we would love to hear that in the comments section or over on Twitter and uh, let us know. And uh, Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Red and I almost said Reddit and Letterboxed <laughs> at RyanCam20. And of course, there's my channel, Ryan Cam's Movie Reviews. I am at 96 subscribers. I've oh. gained four subscribers since Rachel, we did our live stream on 
Saturday. So I'm so close to the hundo and I, and I don't oh want to beg gosh. or anything. Come but on, you, people. But if you want to subscribe, like I, I mean this sincerely, please do. I do put a lot of, I, I put a lot of effort into the channel, especially recently due to current events. Yeah. Uh, with the AFI project coming up, uh, today is a Monday, which means my episode on All About Eve has dropped. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, I will get my episode up for Double Indemnity. And then on Friday, we'll be peering into the Mouth of Madness that is Apocalypse Now. So like I said, now is a great time to subscribe. Great. Yes. All that information is in the description section. Y'all subscribe. Come on. Uh, and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. We're going to be posting a bunch of di new reviews coming up this week. So make sure you're checking that out. And also at the Hallmarkies podcast, uh, we have an interview this week with actor Marcus Rosner, who is delightful. So check that out. And, uh, and yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments and, and uh, consider becoming a patron, please. And Rachel, we... one more thing before. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was going to congratulate you on the most downloaded thing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had uh, in, um, uh, in July for Homework's podcast, we had our most downloads uh, we've ever had over 30,000. So that was amazing. Unbelievable. So thank I you never, so much. I never thought I'd have a decent excuse to say this, but you go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And please consider becoming a patron. It helps us out so much. We really, really, really uh, appreciate it. You can you can get in for under two for for two dollars a month, so it's pretty cheap. And uh, we try to give you some good benefits and it's really fun. So check that out. And also we have our merch store, which has tons of cute merch items, including you can get uh, a shirt with a hidden gems podcast on it, which is very exciting. Our logo with both of us drawn on it uh, by my friend, Joan. So you can check that out and I'll have the link for that in the description. So uh, lots of fun stuff. And thanks again, Ryan. And we will talk next week. Bye everyone. Yes, Bye. <laughs>